CSPI's executive director, Michael Jacobson, founded CSPI in 1971 with two other scientists. Part of the point was to encourage scientists to bring their expertise to bear on matters of public policy. While other nonprofit groups founded at the time focused on the environment, civil rights, and auto safety, CSPI quickly began to focus on the safety and healthfulness of America's food supply. CSPI seeks to eradicate diet-related illness by providing objective nutrition information to the public and by promoting a healthier food environment. We're leading the fight, for instance, to reduce Americans' consumption of soda and other sugar drinks. Those are major contributors to obesity and diabetes. Health notices on soda labels, reductions in sugar levels, and taxes on soft drinks, for instance, could shift consumption toward healthier beverages. Excess salt in the diet promotes high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. So CSPI is working with policymakers and the food industry to lower the sodium content of packaged foods. CSPI brings its reputation for independence and scientific integrity to food policy issues. Nutrition Action Health Letter doesn't accept advertising, and CSPI does not accept corporate funds or government grants. That means we never have to sacrifice the public interest in favor of corporate or political interests. That reputation gives us great credibility on Capitol Hill, with the executive branch, with consumers, the news media, and even with the restaurant and food industries. Those parties won't always agree with us, but they listen carefully to what we have to say. CSPI's staff of scientists, attorneys, policy analysts, and advocates include some of the country's most respected authorities on nutrition, food additives, foodborne illness, and health policy. Plus, we represent nearly a million Americans who not only care about their own health, but who can bring enormous support for our advocacy work at the grassroots level. William Dietz, who headed the Division of Nutrition, Physical Activity, and Obesity at the Centers for Disease Control, said, quote, No other organization has had anywhere close to the impact that CSPI has had on the U.S. food supply. Changing the way America eats is less of a sprint and more of a marathon. But as we see the policies we advocate being adopted by local, state, or federal governments, we know our work is paying off. Like our work to require calorie counts on chain restaurant menus, that's a movement we started at the local level that's now the law of the land. CSPI has been working to improve school foods for more than 30 years, and the passage of the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act in 2010 is getting soda and junk food out of school vending machines and cafeterias once and for all. A lot of people tend to think of CSPI as the food police. That's because of the hard-hitting studies we've done over the years that revealed the astonishingly high calorie and fat content of movie theater popcorn, Chinese food, and other popular restaurant meals. But we think of ourselves more as food detectives, finding out the truth about the foods and the drinks we're consuming, and presenting it in a way that helps Americans change their diets for the better. CSPI campaigns won passage of the law requiring nutrition facts labels on packaged food, a federal definition for organic food, and helped sharply reduce the amount of artificial trans fat used in the food supply. We won mandatory calorie labeling in restaurants and were instrumental in winning passage of laws improving school foods and establishing a modern food safety program. Our Nutrition Action Health Letter is the largest circulation health newsletter in North America, providing nutrition information to over one million people every month. When we go head-to-head -head with the soda industry or with the chain restaurant industry, we are up against some of the most entrenched special interest groups in Washington. We can't compete with their advertising budgets. We can't match their lobbying budgets, and we don't make any campaign contributions. We are only able to overcome these odds because of our reputation for scientific integrity and because of the financial support and the grassroots clout of our hundreds of thousands of supporters. With more resources, we'd be able to reach more Americans with information that could improve their health and build even more momentum for better food policies. We were able to produce an animated short film about soda consumption, The Real Bears, which now has more than 2 million views on YouTube. 
If we had additional resources, we could build into our budget advertising in traditional media as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media to reach the next generation of Americans concerned about nutrition and health. We could also create a mentoring program to train new advocates. We could publish more investigative reports on food safety and nutrition. And we could hire regional advocacy coordinators to help channel Americans' desire for better health into support for policies that would improve their food environment. We've crossed quite a few things off our to-do list in recent years, but so much more remains to be done to reduce Americans' risk of food-related disease. We could help improve Americans' health by working in more communities and in more state legislatures to reduce soda consumption. That's the primary source of added sugars and the sole item in the American diet directly linked to obesity. We could certainly do more to improve the health of low-income Americans by making the food stamp program more nutrition-oriented and we could increase Americans' access to and consumption of healthy fruits and vegetables.